David Bay here for FlexOnline.com. We are in Las Vegas wrapping things up from the 2017 Olympia weekend, and I am standing here with your now seven-time Mr. Olympia, Phil Heath. How you feeling, man? I'm feeling awesome. There's nothing else to say. I've got seven of these things now, and I'm just so thankful, just so proud, and um, yeah, I got seven. I got seven, and I got seven. <laughs> now, inevitably, the bodybuilding fans and the media, everybody, they're always comparing champions of the new eras to the previous champions. When you won number four, you tied Jake Cutler. Right. When you won number six, you tied Dorian Yates. Talk to us about winning number seven and tying the greatest bodybuilder of all time, Arnold Schwarzenegger. I think it's incredible because each and every one of us has been inspired by Arnold. Absolutely. All of us. There's not one bodybuilder in the world that doesn't know who Arnold Schwarzenegger is and what he's contributed to bodybuilding and to know that he's won seven Mr. Olympias. Uh, to be able to walk down the street and to be able to say, yeah, I've won a Mr. Olympia and I won it seven times just like Arnold, not describing, oh, I won the Olympia just like Arnold did. I've won as many as he has. So, you know, it just feels great to know that my legacy, I mean, it's still going. And to know that like, no matter what happens from this day forward, I'm tied with the best. I'm tied with the GOAT, man. I mean, there's only a couple others that won more but we all recognize Arnold as being the best. So I'm just very honored, you know, privileged, humbled, and excited, you know, to be seven-time Mr. Olympia. All right, you've got seven wins now. A couple of those wins earlier on in your career, most notably 2011, 2013. Anybody that saw those wins know you basically walked out, slammed the door on the competition. There was a couple of years where you got pushed a little bit harder. People thought it was a little bit closer. Fast forward, we're here in 2017, and for most people that were here watching the show, members of the media, we saw you walk out on stage. Some of us got to see you backstage, and it was very reminiscent of 2011 and 2013, where you kind of walked out, and no disrespect to the other competitors, right. but... It was, it was clear that you were definitely in the driver's seat. Talk to us about that a little bit. I think it's hard for anyone that works in our industry to even be able to admit that because we're fans. We're fans of all the other guys too. So there is no real disrespect when you're mentioning that. It just is like someone's got to win and someone's got to lose. Um, it doesn't mean that the guys were off. A lot of guys were on. It's just that I knew they would be on. And so I had to be on. They pushed me to be at my best and you know that's what I went in you know this Olympia prep knowing that these guys see me as Mr. Olympia loving life loving being oh hey champ hey champ they want to be called that so to know that I take their best shot each and every year and this year was no different I walked out there with the intention knowing that I can really show off some real muscle maturity that some of these guys just don't have yet and capitalize on just the experience factor and the presentation for both days. You know, before, you know, like Friday would be slow and then I come back on Saturday night and close the door. Friday night came out banging and then I wanted to make sure that tonight I slammed the damn door shut. And I believe that that's what we did. And I did it in good fashion. I didn't have to really talk a lot of trash this year. I just kept it myself. I let everybody else do the talking. And uh, that was pr pretty, that was pretty different for me. You know, everybody knows me talking trash about being a dream killer and this and that and the other. I got some really good, honest advice from Peter McGuff, and he just told me, Phil, you're six time Mr. Olympia. You don't have to say a damn thing. Just go ahead and train, focus, 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 win, and that'll be enough. So, you know what? I, I really believe I'm going to carry that on to try to win number eight. Really just go into hiding like Dorian, not really say a whole lot except for, you know, the typical, you know, posts and stuff, social media and stuff. Sure, sure. And uh, just really enjoy this process because at the end of the day, I want to look at back, back at this legacy and know that I, I did what I loved and I inspired other people to do it. And I let them, whether it be negative or whatever, they did that, not me. I went out there on stage and I kicked some ass and I took some names and I smiled. But you guys saw me smile and I was having Absolutely. a blast. And those guys too, like Rami and I had a great conversation. I mean, he thanked me and I thanked him too. You know, and, and I think this sport really needs to just really, really, really just start being positive about what they're seeing right now. You don't have to be negative. If you love me or you love Rami or you love Bonac, love him. But don't love him and hate the other. Just love him. Focus on him. Just love him. Love what they present. 
I love these guys, man. Like, I know there's going to come a point in time where I'm not going to be able to do this anymore. Sure. But I'm still going to love these guys for what they bring because they're part of me. We share that, that fraternity of being a champion, and I cannot wait to train again. I cannot wait to win again, but also just to inspire other people and to let you guys at home know bodybuilding doesn't need to be like this. It can be like this, okay? And I proved that this year. I proved that this year that you don't have to just run your mouth. You go in the gym, you work hard, you make improvements. That's called bodybuilding. You don't bodybuild with your mouth. You bodybuild with your muscles and your mind and your heart. And that's what I did, and that's why I'm seven-time Mr. Olympian. I'm so thankful, and I'm just humble beyond belief. All right, now you said, talked a little bit about being thankful for Rami. Now you've stood one and two with some of the greatest bodybuilders of all time. You've stood one and two with Jake Cutler, with Dexter Jackson, with Kai Green, yeah. with Sean Roden. The first time uh, Rami and you have stood next to each other in this capacity, mm -hmm. uh, congratulations to Rami, his yeah. highest placing at second place. Um, any different standing next to somebody as big as Rami uh, in comparison to when you had to stand next to Jay and Kai and Dexter? It's, it's so different because standing next to Jay is like, <laughs> it's freaking laughable. You're like, he's that, an icon. Yeah, yeah. Jay Keller, man. Like, yeah. And he was also Mr. Olympia when I was going against him. So, you know, the, the level of respect, um, the, the, the graininess, the hardness. I mean, I was going against a very polished, determined bodybuilder that, he went through wars with Coleman. So trying to dethrone someone like him was, that, that was one of my greatest achievements. Um, going against Kai, we all know, like that was war. That was real fucking war. <laughs> and I know a lot of people online, you know, they, they wish they, they could see that back right. because they saw the energy, the passion. The, you know, even as I talk about it, I'm like. Getting a little fired up. Yeah, because because he, he pulled that out of me, I pulled that out of him. And we gave fans something to be entertained by. With Dexter, I mean, I went against Dexter at the Arnold Classics, you know, back in 08. I watched him win his first Sandow when I placed third at my first Mr. Olympia contest. And I placed second, uh, I watched him play second with me, uh, I think that was 2015. Yes. And uh, placing next to him, that's Mr. Consistency right there. Um, you cannot take a day off with him. No. Even at his age of 48, you cannot slip up because he will get you. So he's the most dangerous guy on this post-Olympia tour. And, uh, you know, going against those guys and then, and then seeing the younger guy, Remy. Today's his birthday. I wished him happy birthday backstage, you know. And, and uh, he was like, oh, thanks. And I'm like, dude, I remember talking to you, man, back in 2010. You know, I went to Oxygen Gym, and I was like, you're going to be with us very soon. So I told him that when we walked over. I said, you're here now. You're here now. Absolutely. You're here now. You earned it. And uh, after I won, I was like, you did awesome. And uh, thank you for the battle. That's what this is about, guys. This is about battle. It, but the battle doesn't have to be with swearing at each other, calling each other horrible names, this and that. This ain't like football and stuff like that. You know, yeah. bodybuilding is different, man. There, there should be more respect. And I'm Mr. Olympia. I'm seven time. I'm showing these guys respect. You guys think that I'm being a dick and this and that. I'm showing these guys respect. If I can show these guys respect, I'm not saying you gotta show me, but show the sport. The sport Be sure. positive. Yourself, flex, every, you know, we're trying to give you guys something special. Enjoy it. It doesn't have to be, yeah, you know what I mean? Right, right. Because we, we the athletes, I talk to all the athletes. Sure, they sure. want the respect, they want positivity. Cause you know what that does? That makes them even want more to fight, to, to be their best. But when they're always this infighting crap and this and that, yeah. it's just noise, man. Like we well, want to, and well, we're over here hanging out. Sure, well, we're over here hanging out backstage, t talking about what these guys say online about us. We're laughing at them. We're like, dude, like if they only knew that we're all friends. <laughs> yeah, you know it's interesting because like with the fan base, it's like there's so much discussion about how the fans want the old camaraderie, but at the same time they want drama, they want rivalries, yeah. they want a little bit of trash talk. And you know, we all watched uh, Floyd, Mayweather, Floyd Mayweather and yeah. Conor McGregor go back and forth with some major trash talking, and it made things interesting. But again, the fans want a little bit of that, they want a lot of camaraderie, so sometimes there's a, there's a real gray area in a fine want, line. They, unfortunately, they don't know what we want. We're trying to tell you guys, you can't have it both ways, but we're trying to give you guys something special. Love your favorite bodybuilder, you can love more than one. Take what they're trying to teach you on social media and everything else, and magazines and such. 
and follow their journey, man. Love what they're doing and be inspired and this and that. But I can tell you this, I have one of the best jobs in the world. I can actually be inspired by a Bonac. And I'll take some credit here. I was the one that mentioned Bonac last year. <laughs> None of y'all even thought about Bonac. That's because I pay attention. That's because I love the sport. And that's because I appreciate what he brings. Bonac, Rodin, Ruley, Dexter, Remy. All, all champions. Guys, man. Cedric McMillan, Arnold Classic champion. I mean, these guys are great. Let's let them be great, man. Because when it's all said and done, when we all retire, like Johnny Jackson did tonight, we want to be able to be like, you know what, man, thank you. I, Absolutely. When Johnny Jackson walked off that Olympia stage, we all thanked him. Because we all know that's going to be us one day. Absolutely. And we want the respect from our own brothers. So as much infighting people want to see, we love each other through the heat of battle. And yeah, you know, we talk a little trash on stage and this and that. But it's, it's, it's because we want to be Mr. Olympia. You're the best, you're the king, you know, but I just want guys to realize that bodybuilding is awesome. You know, we're all privileged to be able to do it, to be able to travel around the world, to be able to do these videos, to be able to inspire you guys. And I just hope that you guys are inspired, not just by me, but all the other people. And I appreciate these interviews too, because, you know, let's face it, man. I mean, I'm going for the record and then what? I'm probably not going to stick around. I might be putting on the suit and doing your job. Uh, you know, he, who knows? I just got here. He's taking yeah, my he job. Got here. Yeah, got exactly. Here. So. But uh, but all, in all seriousness, you know, I appreciate you guys, and you know, this was a this was a legendary day. But, so I'm going to go enjoy it. I'm going to go up to the gala. I normally don't do it, but I'm going to hang out with these VIPs. You know, they spend a lot of money to be able to come here. And I'm going to go up there and I'm going to shake their hands. I'm going to take all their pictures. I'm going to hear their stories. And I'm going to eat some cake and ice cream. <laughs> all right, guys. And that's where we're going to wrap it up. What better way to wrap it up yeah. with cake and ice cream? I don't need to ask the question even whether Phil's going to go for eight because we already know that we're going to see him back here next year in 2018. So that's going to do it for us, guys. Wrapping things up one last time from the 2017 Olympia weekend with your now seven-time Mr. Olympia, Phil Heath. This is David Bay for FlexOnline.com. And we are out.